Hey Lens Creators, I'm here today to introduce you to the world of Lens Studio so you can learn how to get started making the same kind of viral effects you see all over the internet. Let's get started. This is the home screen of Lens Studio. At the top, you'll see the Lens Studio banner. You can click through it to see what's going on in the Snap Lens community, as well as what's new in Lens Studio itself. Keep an eye on it whenever you open the app so you can be among the first to utilize our latest and greatest features, effects, and templates. Below the banner, you'll find the Recommended Templates section. Lens Studio comes with many different templates you can use as starting points for your lenses that take some of the manual work out of the process. Here, you'll find popular and recommended templates we think you should try out. On the left side of your screen, right under your Home tab, you can find the Templates tab. Click on it to dive into the full array of templates you have at your disposal in Lens Studio. If you can't tell from the scrolling, there are so many different templates to choose from, including ones that interact with bodies, faces, audio, the world, and everything in between. Finding what you're looking for is easy too. Click on the category menu to filter through and find just what you need. For example, you can use the face option to see all the templates which include a face capability. Next to the category menu, you can also filter by skill level. Try the beginning templates if you're just getting started or the more advanced ones if you're an experienced developer. Finally, at the very top of the home page, you have the search bar. Use it to search for recent projects that you've worked on or templates you'd like to use. Say you were looking for a face template. The search bar will pull up all kinds of templates you can use based on your keyword. At the bottom, we have a quick description of what that template will help you do, what skill level it's right for, and a visual preview of its capabilities. One thing to keep in mind though is that Lens Studio doesn't confine you to just one kind of capability in your lens. You can create a lens that changes a face and interacts with the world, or any other number of other possibilities. Let's try opening a template now. We'll choose the Face Paint template. When you open your first Lens Studio project, you'll find yourself in the Lens Studio workspace. This is where the magic happens and you'll bring your vision to life. The workspace is composed of different panels where you can create and control your lens. Resize each panel by dragging the side or move them around to fit your needs. If you get a little carried away with your resizing, you can click Windows, then Menu, then Panels, then Default Layout to get back where you started. Now we'll take a tour through all the panels one by one. First, let's take a look at the Objects panel in the top left of Lens Studio. This panel provides you with a list of items and effects in your lens. For example, you can see that our current lens has a camera to view the scene and several face-related effects. Now, we'll add our own object to the panel. Press the plus button to open the Add New pop-up. Here, you can find different objects you can add to your lens, whether it be an image, text, audio, the effects, and more. Filter through different effects and objects at the top of the panel or use the search bar to find what you're looking for. For example, if you type in face, you can find all the effects related to the face. If you want to add your own effect, just navigate to the one you want. Here, we'll add a mesh in the form of a box. Just left click and then presto, it's added to your objects panel. Okay, so you've added your box. Hi, Mr. Box. You can see it here in the middle of your screen in the scene panel. Think of this panel as your canvas. It shows you where different items exist in the scene of your lens. You can navigate through the scene panel by using your mouse. Right click and drag to orbit around the scene. Scroll to zoom in and out. You can pan around the scene by holding the space bar, left clicking and dragging. Depending on what objects you're selecting in your lens, the scene panel may change. You'll see what I mean a little later in this tutorial. But for now, if we select the box object, we can move it around this 3D scene. The toolbar at the top offers different ways to manipulate the object. Select Move to move the object around. Select Rotate to rotate. You can also find the shortcut for each tool by hovering over it. W for the Move tool, E for Rotation, and R for resizing your object. Now that you know about the Objects panel and the Scene panel, 
I'm going to show you how you can use the two of them together. As you build your lens, you may want to add additional objects to the scene if, say, your box object isn't quite cutting it. Sorry, box. Let's try that now. We're going to use the search bar to type face, then add in the face stretch effect. In this case, the scene panel has changed to show a face, and this is because we're modifying a face with the newly selected face stretch. These nodes let you click and drag to change how a user's face will look after the effect is applied. You'll see in our preview panel, the face is obstructed by the box we added earlier. You can toggle objects on and off in the Objects panel to show or hide them. Now that we've hidden our box, go ahead and select the Face Stretch Effect object again to get back to what we were doing before. So, if I select the Face Stretch object, I can continue manipulating my face stretch. Or, I can toggle the box again to get back to editing the box by clicking back to the box object and moving it around based on where I want it. If you decide you no longer need an object, right-click and press Delete. I think we all saw this coming. Goodbye, Mr. Box. Next up, let's take a look at the Inspector panel. It allows you to configure selected objects in more detail. What you have to remember is that an object contains a list of components which actually is responsible for the effect. For example, if we selected the Face Stretch object, we can see in the Inspector panel the face stretch component which stretches the face. Here, you can use the slider to modify the strength of the effect. Each component applies different effects to your lens. You can add different components to your object by pressing the plus add component button at the bottom of the panel. Like before, you can find different effects to add into your object and therefore lens. It's time to combine everything we've learned from the Objects panel, the Scene panel, and the Inspector panel to create something new like you would making your own lens. How about modifying eye color with our lens? We'll start in the Objects panel because we want to add something brand new into our lens. Here, we'll choose Scene Object because we need an empty object to add our eye color component to. It's always best to keep your Objects panel clean so things don't get lost. You can click and drag on an object to rearrange it in your Objects panel. We'll drag it under Effects Objects so it can be next to the object containing our face stretch. We can right-click on the object and press Rename to change the name of the object. We'll name it Eye Color. Next, we'll jump to the Inspector panel where we can add a new component to our object. We'll add a new component called Eye Color. This time, our scene panel has changed to an eye color viewer. Here, you can see our eye color effect applied to different eyes. We'll see in the inspector panel how those eyes can be changed. If I slide the slider to the right to increase the alpha value, you'll notice that the eye color gets more solid. You can change the color to a different one, or get into further customization options. Pro tip, like with the face stretch effect from before, you can add the eye color quickly via the objects panel and Lens Studio will do what we just did automatically. Last but not least, let's take a look at the preview panel on the right side of your screen. This panel comes in handy because it allows you to test out your lens in real time, in real ways on a variety of different people and test devices. First off, you can see how your lens would look like on different people and various facial expressions, so you can ensure it provides a fun experience for everybody. But secondly, you can even press the webcam button to see how your lens would look like on you. For many people, seeing their lens come to life on their own face is a big aha moment, so be sure to check it out. For today's homework, try playing around with Lens Studio, making your first lens, then trying it on yourself in the preview panel. And that's that! You've just learned the very basics of Lens Studio. Up ahead, we have more episodes from our Starter Kit series coming your way that'll show you how to create your first full lens and then publish it for the world to see. As you saw earlier, there are almost countless effects and templates to choose from. So, if you can imagine it, you can probably build it. We, and the millions of people who use our lenses every day, can't wait to see what you come up with. 
Check out our community support resources at the link in the description or head on over to at SnapAR on Twitter where you can network with other creators or even DM us any questions you have about your own projects. If you found this video helpful, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Hit that little bell icon to get notified about other tutorials, tips, and office hour clips straight from Snap. Well, creators, happy creating. We'll see you next time.